Now, friends, so I'll be talking on this ancillary therapy in mechanical ventilation. So there are seven components in this. So I would be covering the seven components in maybe three to four videos. So the topics that come under this uh, topic would be secretion management, suction, ET tube types, humidification, nebulizer and aerosol therapy, mobilization and DVT prophylaxis. So in this particular video, I'll be talking only about the secretion management. So the subsequent ones I'll possibly cover in the next three to four videos. So when you look at secretion management and someone has an ET tube in place, uh, so there are different things that compromise your secretion clearance. So there is an impaired cough reflex, uh, which mitigate your secretion clearance. And there can be uh, mucociliary dysfunction that tends to set in because of the sheer presence of the ET tube, which impede your secretion clearance. And there is neuromuscular weakness that sets in, which again uh, mitigate your uh, sputum clearance. Then there may be this underlying atelectasis, which impede your secretion clearance. So these are four things that tend to have a complex interplay in uh, mitigating the secretion clearance in someone who is intubated and ventilated. So absence of cough, mucociliary dysfunction, neuromuscular weakness, and underlying atelectasis. So when we talk about secretion management, uh, under secretion, the humidification plays an important role along with suctioning and mobilization of the patient. So every listener here would agree that humidification is very important to maintain effective clearance of secretions along with uh, frequent suctioning that should be happening as per the secretions and maintaining the ET lumen by suctioning. And there are these novel methods, which is mucus slurper and mucus shaver which has been tried out in animal models and these are not widely adopted. So I'm not, I'm sure that many of the listeners uh, would agree that this is something which is not used in most ICUs and there are special types of ET tube. So, so this is just a pic pictures of mucus slurper and uh, a review of this came in one of these journals. So where they've done an animal studies with this, uh, basically you have a suction port which tends to remove the mucus that may be lining the <coughs> trachea. And this is the mucus shaver, as the name suggests, it has this rotablation sort of a uh, ET tube, which tends to shave the mucus uh, lining and then tends to drain out the uh, mucus lining from the airway. So, but these are not widely adopted. So this is something you can keep in mind that these have been tried and, uh, but they are not widely uh, sort of adopted. Then after this, there are certain instruments post extubation uh, that have been used to uh, effectively clearance the secretions. Uh, one of the devices is mechanical insufflation and exufflation device. So we had this device tested and uh, these are commercially available. And uh, we have tried this device in some of our post extubation patients where you provide a huge negative pressure followed by a positive pressure in a cyclical wave. Uh, so because there is a huge differential between the negative pressure and the positive pressure, uh, so that this differential helps in clearing the mucus secretions very effectively. So as you see, you put a negative pressure of 30 to 40 centimeter water and suddenly you change it to the positive pressure and that pressure differential helps in clearing the uh, secretions. And the study done with this instrument used uh, this particular device thrice a day for eight days and it showed that it minimized the risk of reintubation, but the concerns would be tracheobronchitis. So this is something uh, which possibly one could consider in a post-operative se settings where the cough reflex may not be very effective. So similar to this, there is this intrapulmonary percussive ventilation where they use an oscillator which uh, provides tidal volume in a pulsatile way. And, uh, it, and this oscillator uh, tends to provide this tidal volume in a pulse style way at 14 hertz uh, and this oscillator moves at 14 hertz for 15 to 30 minutes and where the expiratory flow is to inspiratory flow cycles between four is to one ratio so that there is this pulsatile inspiratory flow that is provided and there is a prolonged expiratory phase which is found to effectively clear the secretions and again the concerns with this would be tracheobronchitis um, so even this uh, we have used in uh, some of our ctvs patients uh, so these are certain things which could be adopted to effectively clear the secretions in the post extubation setting. And this is something which possibly we could adopt uh, in our ICU. And we have done this because when we see, suppose a left, uh, left lower lobe collapse, 
then we put the patient in the right lateral position to open up the left lower lobe. So continuous lateral rotation is something that is tried where you move the patients into uh, change, keep changing the position every six hours in a day. And there was this study done in US which came in a paper in 2001 where they did a study in 19 patients randomized between continuous lateral rotation and conventional physiotherapy and they found the PAO2 FIO2 ratio significantly increased in patients who were put into continuous lateral rotation group as compared to the conventional physiotherapy. And the tidal volume delivery was not any different between the continuous lateral rotation group and the conventional phys physiotherapy. And they found the sputum volume, the volume of sputum that was expectorated was much higher in continuous lateral rotation, showing that continuous lateral rotation is something that may help in effective sputum clearance and, uh, and consequently it can improve your PAO2 by FIO2 as well. But what is important and what is widely adopted in ICUs, which I'm sure many of the listeners would agree upon, is the chest physio. So some of the principles of chest physio, which uh, your physiotherapist would be doing, and it's important for all the ICU trainees to understand is, if the intent is to drain the right upper lobe, then this is the ideal position of the patient, which helps in draining of the right upper lobe. So if the intent is to uh, get the secretions out of the right middle lobe, then patient has to be put into left lateral position with the head, head uh, with the foot end elevated to 30 centimeters. And if the intent is to remove the secretions from the right lower lobe, then patient has to be put in the left lateral position. As you see, he's lying down on the left lateral position with the foot end elevated by 50 centimeters. And same thing applies to the left, uh, left lung as well. So the intent is to drain the left upper lobe then patient has to be sitting forward and then leaning forward with the pillows pressed against his chest. I'm sure this maneuver you would be seeing many physiotherapists doing this maneuver to get the secretions out of the left upper lobe. And if the intent is to get the secretions from the lower segment of the left upper lobe, then similar to the, uh, to, to the pictures on the right side, you would put patients on the right lateral position with the foot end elevated by 30 centimeters. And if the intent is to drain the secretions from the left lower loop, you would put patients on the right lateral position with the uh, leg end elevated to 50 centimeters. So these are certain maneuvers which I'm sure many of you would have seen your physiotherapist doing in the ICU. And this is something that one should be adopting to effectively clear secretions more so when there are collapse of the left lower lobe or right upper lobe. Very often I, you would have seen when I'm doing rounds where I see a collapse on the say left lower lobe. So we would tell the physiotherapist, please put him on the right lateral position or we would tell the nurse to put him on the right lateral position and do a physiotherapy bit on the left side. And even putting head low for some time would help in draining out the secretions effectively. So, so this is a brief overview on the effective secretion management. Maybe in the subsequent videos, I'll cover the other components that come in the ancillary therapies in mechanical ventilation. So thank you one and all. So just end with this beautiful quote. So in the rich wage war, it's the poor who die. So this is very pertinent to the current context of what is happening in the world. So thank you, one and all. Okay, I'm going to go ahead.